In this video, we are going to continue our learning about deserializing JSON to dynamic in C Sharp. As mentioned in the previous video, we have three ways of doing that by using dynamic declarations, using anonymous object, and leveraging the power of JSON DOM. In the previous video, we covered the first option. So, it's time to cover the other two. Let's start with another convenient way of deserialization with Newtonsoft by using the anonymous object. To do that, let's open the Jean rating class and add a new method. Let's add a new public static method that returns a tuple of string genre and double IMDB. Let's call it using anonymous type and provide a single string parameter. Inside the method, we create a new anonymous object by calling the JSON convert dot deserialize anonymous type method and provide our JSON string and a new anonymous object with two properties. This anonymous object essentially needs to be a blueprint of our target JSON graph. That's why we specify the genre property with an initial value of an empty string. Similarly, we specify the rating property and initialize the nested IMDB as double. That does the trick. The resulting object holds the target JSON data as we want. From there, we can access the genre and rating.imdb properties in a strongly typed way. So, let's do that. Let's extract the genre using the anonymous object and the genre property. Also, let's do the same with imdb by using anonymous.rating.imdb. Finally, we will return our tuple with both required values. If we want to get the value of Rotten Tomatoes, we can do that too. Let's first copy the previous method and let's add some changes. We will add another parameter for the tuple and let's change the name of the method by adding with dictionary. Also, let's change this assignment to dictionary string double. Now, for the IMDB variable, instead of rating.imdb, we will call IMDB as the dictionary key. Additionally, we will create the rotten variable and extract the value from the anonymous object using the rating dictionary and then the rotten tomatoes key. Finally, we have to add one more value to our return type. Now, we can test these two methods. Let's navigate to our testing class and start with the fact attribute first. Next, let's create a new public void method and name it given JSON string when using anonymous type, then dynamically retrieve genre and the rating. Now, let's extract our JSON string from the movie stats class and the squid game property. Also, we create a new tuple variable with genre and IMDB components and fetch the value from the genre rating class by calling the using anonymous type method where we pass the JSON string. To assert our values, let's use the same named class and call the equal method to evaluate that the thriller is the genre. Also, we can use the same class and the same method to evaluate the rating of IMDB. 
we can do the same for another method using dictionary. And since the code is almost the same, we can simply use already prepared code. Here, we change the name of the method, added tuple component, of course, called a different method, and added one more evaluation to our test. Now, let's find both tests in the test explorer, select both of those, and run them. We can see both tests pass. This means we can continue with the same thing using the native system text JSON library. But just before we do that, since we named the previous test in the previous video without the given part, let's just remove that part from both new test methods. Now we can continue. In the case of the native library, we don't have any direct method for the anonymous type, but we can implement it on our own. To do that, let's create a new class in the native folder and name it genre rating. Remove the namespaces and make it public static. Now we can add our static generic t method named deserialize anonymous type of t and provide two parameters string json string and t anonymous object. In the body, we will simply call json serializer dot deserialize method with the provided t generic type and a json string as an argument. This is a bit tricky part. We prepare a generic method that works on type inference. Since we aim to call this method anonymously, without specifying the generic type argument, we need a parameter that infers the type during invocation. That's the role of the anonymous object parameter here. The rest is nothing but calling the usual deserializing method. With this helper method, we can work the same way as with the Newtonsoft version. That said, we can open the genre rating class for the Newtonsoft library, copy this anonymous type method, and paste it back in the native class. And simply remove the JSON convert part because we are calling our internal method. And remove this Newtonsoft namespace. Now, to test this, we can simply copy the test method from the Newtsoft test class and paste it inside the native test class. Well, we are testing the same thing. Just we have to fix this issue by importing the using for the native Jean rating class. So, let's find this test, run it, and we can see it passes. Now, let's continue with JSON deserialization into dynamic object using JSON DOM. Both native and Newtsoft library offer strong DOM API to retrieve data from JSON string on demand. Both of them has several DOM classes that work in pair and can be alternatively used. For example, the native library provides JSON element and JSON document combinations for read-only DOM and JSON node and JSON object pair for mutable DOM. Newtsoft similarly uses JToken and JObject. Let's start by using JSON DOM with system text JSON. First, let's talk about our already familiar type, JSON element. We are going to implement two methods in the native version of the genre rating class. First, Let's create a public static method that returns a tuple with string genre, double IMDB, and double rotten. Name it using JSON element and provide a single string parameter. Inside the method, we will extract the JSON element by calling the JSON serializer dot deserialize method with JSON element as a generic type and a single argument. 
we simply deserialize to JSON element as we do for POCO. All we get here is a DOM tree of nodes, where each node represents the corresponding node of JSON data structure. Finally, we return a call to the new fromJSON element method, which we are about to create, and pass the JSON element as an argument. Now, let's create the missing method using the help from Visual Studio. And let's provide the implementation. First, we extract genre by using the JSON element and calling the getProperty method with the genre as an argument. This method gets the JSON element representing the value of the provided property. Also, we call the getString method to get the value of the element as a string. Now, we can do almost the same for the IMDB. And to do that, let's copy the previous code and paste it. Rename the variable to IMDB, change the argument to rating, call another getProperty method with the IMDB argument, and change the getString to get double method. Also, we can now copy and paste this part and change the variable to rotten. We will not change this one, but we will change this argument from IMDB to rotten tomatoes. Finally, we can return our tuple with all three values. A similar approach is applicable for JSON document, so let's simply paste it here. Though we can use the usual JSON serializer .deserialize method, we go for a slightly faster alternative, JSON document .parse method. Since JSON document is disposable, we also declare a using block. After that, we pass root element, an instance of JSON element, to the from JSON element method for the final output. Now to speed things up and not repeat ourselves as we are about to write the same test we wrote for Newtsoft library for using dynamic and expand object, let's just open the native test class and paste two test methods here. We can see they are the same besides the calls to different methods. Now let's find both tests in the test explorer tab, run both and we can see the test pass. As mentioned before, the native library provides another set of DOM classes, JSON node and JSON object. They are a bit slower, but more convenient than their JSON element and JSON documents counterparts. So let's navigate back to our native genre rating class. And again, let's create a public static method with the tuple as a return type that contains string genre, double IMDB, and double rotten. Let's name it using JSON object and provide a string parameter. We will start with the JSON DOM variable and call JSON serializer dot deserialize method. Provide JSON object as a generic type and the JSON string as an argument. Now, to extract genre, we will cast the result to string and call JSON DOM of the genre key. Let's extract the IMDB as well by casting the result to double, call JSON DOM, and this time provide the rating as key and then IMDB as another one. Finally, let's copy paste this line and change IMDB to Rotten and the second key from IMDB to Rotten Tomatoes. Lastly, we can return our tuple with all three elements. The most interesting part 
is that the same works with JSON node. To prove it, let's copy paste the entire method and just modify the name to using JSON node and modify the generic type to JSON node. As you can see, everything else is the same. That said, let's test this. Let's copy the previous test, since the new ones will be almost the same, paste it, change the name of the test to when using JSON object, and simply call the using JSON object method. Also, we can paste the test one more time. Change the name to when using JSON node and change the method to using JSON node. Now we can find both tests in our test explorer, run them, and verify that both pass. At this point, we are finished with the native library and Let's use JSON DOM with Newtonsoft JSON. Newtonsoft also provides a similar elegant API with their J object and J token DOM classes. The implementation is no different than the native version except for the deserialization part. So let's navigate to the native class and copy the using JSON object method. Move to the Newtonsoft class paste the method here and change the deserialization line to json convert dot deserialize object method pass j object as the type and provide a json string as an argument the rest is the same of course we can also use j token instead of j object here and everything will work as it's supposed to. One more thing. Unlike the native version, Newtonsoft also supports a path-based node selection. To show that, let's copy this last method and paste it. Modify the name to using JSON path. And now after the deserialization, we want to change the way we retrieve the values. So instead of the genre key, we will call the select token method and provide $.genre as an argument. Let's do the same for IMDB by calling the same method and passing $.rating.imdb as an argument. Lastly, let's call the same method here and pass $.rating with the Rotten Tomatoes as a dictionary key. This is particularly useful if we want to cherry pick data based on the value of some other node of the tree. Overall, Newtonsoft is quite feature rich in all aspects of dynamic JSON deserialization as compared to system text JSON library. Of course, to test this, all you have to do is to copy paste the previous test method inside the Newtons of test class and change the name of the tests and methods you call. So that's it. Please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down there if you like the video and want to support us. You can also use the bell button to get notifications from our channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again in another video. Until then, all the best.